Welcome GDLers to another edition of Scripting Adventure. This is Bruce from Barking Dog Bim, and in this episode we are going to look at the list item and list field statements. This is a way to nicely group all of your attributes for your part into an easily programmable and presentable field for your user interface. So what is a list item? A list item and a list field go together. So let's show you what they look like. So this is a standard Graphisoft bed. And we can see that the interface here, now that we've learnt what we have, we can see how this is put together with our out fields, in fields, separator lines. We haven't covered a picture yet. If, however, we come down to, say, our 2D representation page, we can see that they've got this, let's call it a window or a sub dialogue that's listed out all of the items that don't require as much intuition to figure out. We understand what a fill type is, a pen, background pen. We don't need all of the intricate buttons and whatnot to choose it. So just this listed approach is good. It's adequate and it's easier to program too. And it's got your collapsible fields. So this whole sub dialogue is called a list field and the items within it are called list items. So let's make one of those for our table. Here is a list field. What is the syntax? Now bear with me. UI list field is the statement. Field ID is what we need. X and Y, we understand what they are, the X and Y coordinates, width and height. Got a good idea of what they might mean. Icon flag, description header, and value header. And that's a little bit more confusing, but thankfully they're optional, so we may not have to deal with them. Okay, field ID, what is that? The unique identifier of the list field. Oh, okay, well, we've encountered that sort of language before, right? That's similar to the hotspot, so we can just use our unID approach. So we'll have a look at that. This ID is also used in the list item commands. Okay, all right. That's list field. What is list item? List item. UI list item, item ID, field ID. Oh, field ID. We saw that up here, didn't we? Field ID. Okay, all right. We'll keep that in mind. Name in inverted commas. List item 2 has name not in inverted commas. That seems to be the only difference. Child flag, image, and parameter description. All right. Let's see if we can make this work. So what's the statement? UI list field. Then it's the field ID. Well, this is the only list field we're going to use, so we can use a field ID of 1, I think. X and Y, it'll be 0 and 0 for now. The width will make it the full width, which is what? UI X max. The Y will be UI Y max. And that's it for now. Well, let's see if that's everything we needed. Well, looks okay. Preview. Let's go to our next page. We've got a big blank thing on our interface. Let's just comment it out. Have another look. There we go. Page two. So if we uncomment that, get rid of the outfield, have another look. Right, so it's done something. We'll check it. Tab one, item one is out of bounds. We've got that. Let's add our first list item now. So list item was UI list item needs an item ID. So this is where we need an incrementing ID. So we'll introduce one here. We'll go DT for desktop ID equals one. So DT ID is our item ID. Field ID is one. We'll just introduce a desktop list ID in here. And then we'll use that to identify our list item. Then it's a name. The name will be GS content pen. 
So that should be all we need to generate our list item. And it makes sense, right? Maximum width, maximum height, showing our contour pen. Let's have a look. If we look at our preview, it's there, but it doesn't look quite right. And this is a bit of a quirk with the list item, which the help isn't clear about. If we have a look in our actual ArchiCAD environment and not our preview environment, we can see that it's different here. We've got our, our pen number, our pen color, and we've got the option to choose a pen here. And if we stretch out our interface, I can see that there's a little arrow just appearing off to the side there. Depending on how quick I am, there we go. So the quirk of the list item is that it will stretch, supposedly, to fit your user interface width. However, it doesn't do a very good job of it. And because my UI Max is 480, well, it turns out that your UI list item, if it's over 444, it behaves in a funny manner. So let's have a look at that. And there it is. It fits correctly. I've got my drop down arrow and it all looks as it should be. However, if I stretch my dialogue, it stretches to fit, which is fine. But if I bring it back, it's disappeared. Now, a way to get around that is to add a one here on the end. And if we look at our help, we'll see that all I've just put in is an icon flag. What does that mean? Zero means icon column is not generated. One means icon column is generated. So all it's doing is adding another column to what I'm supposed to be seeing. And that's enough of a digital kick so that it fixes it as I adjust the width of my dialogue. Let's add another one. So what's the next one? The next one will be GS fill type. So GS fill type. Now this item ID needs to be unique. And so what I need to do up here is go DTID equals DTID plus one. I'll add that to my next line as well. So that makes that item ID unique. That item ID will be one, which means it belongs to this list field. Let's have a look. There we go. We've got my fill type and my contour pen. Unfortunately, you can't preview this stuff in confidence because of its misbehavior so if i check that it says it's out of bounds but if i save it and check it in the object actual it's behaving itself it's doing what it's supposed to do so i've got my contour pen and my fill type with the correct drop downs with everything visible so that's pretty good let's now add these to a group at the moment they're just sitting there i would like them to be in a collapsible menu for 2d representation and that is another list item. We'll put it here. So what do I need to change in my list item? Under here, we've got our list item, item ID, field ID, that's correct. The name, that'll be blank. The child flag, what's that? Child flag zero. The list item is a group item. So a group item is means it belongs to a collapsible group. Child flag one, the list item is a child item. So what does that mean? That means it looks like this. This will be nothing. I have a comma and a zero, more blank, and then I will say 2D representation. Let's have a look. So I've got a menu item up here, but these aren't collapsible. That's because I need to add these to the group. What does that look like? I'll just go comma one. Comma one. There we go. We've got our collapsible group. Excellent. Now there's one last thing we need to do, and that is add some icons to our list. So if we have a look at our example, we look under 2D representation, we can see that next to each type of parameter, they've got a nice little icon there just to help with the visual feedback, help with the user selection. And so a fill type, has a certain icon, pen, background pen, 3D representation for surface, and so on. So we need to choose the same for ours. 
So if we go to open an object, let's go to our Archicad library, object library, macros, and IS maps, list icons, 32 by 15. This is where you find all of your items for these list item parameters. These names can change Archicad version to Archicad version, so it's always safest to keep your own copy. So under this 2D representation, under our list items here, and I'll just indent these, just so that I know they belong to there. Makes it a bit easier for me to read it. And we want, for the contour pen, it is HL1. Preview. Look at that, we've got our image, excellent. And so we'll just add another one here. Let's preview that. How about that, eh? There it is. So those are the basics of how to create a list item. I'll just fill in the rest of the parameters. So now we want to create our next group item. So we'll copy the first two lines and adjust what we need. So I've put in my override option, override desktop surface. And this is where we hide our desktop surface. So I'll copy down my option, make it desktop surface, update my icon to suit, check to make sure it's right. Yes, desktop surface, good. Now I can add an if statement in here, which will read the same as what I have up here. So I'll just copy this down. So if we've got the override active, then we will list our surface. Now we can't test it in here because it doesn't work. I can't get to it. So I'll save it. Let's have a look here. There is my override. If I uncheck that, my list item disappears. So that's behaving exactly how I want it to. Excellent. So I'll just finish out the remainder. So there it is, there's our list item right there with collapsible groups. Got our icons down the side. It works, hides things when we need them hidden. Oop, that one's not working. That's because I didn't update this. That's hiding that one, that's hiding that one. Right, I just want to talk about this width briefly. So 444 is a magic number for this infield. If I change this to, let's say, just 344, just an arbitrary number, save it and have a look, we can see that its width is smaller than my available canvas size. If I make this 460, its width the width misbehaves, as you can see. So I don't know why, but for some reason 444 is the magic number. Probably has something to do with the fact that 444 used to be the maximum width of your user dialog. It's now 480, but once upon a time it was 444. So they've updated the width of your dialog, but haven't updated the width of your list fields. Alright, this one up there. Now you know how to use the list item and the list field statements. 
to make your part even easier to use and understand. See you in the next one.